Chat for everyone. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hello. To a review of Red Markets, the role playing game. So, Red Markets is a economic Almost... horror game in its own words. Oh, yeah, it is its own words, right? That's yeah, those are literally um, its I, words. I actually copy and pasted the opening paragraph of the game. Let's do that if, as an intro. Yeah. What is Red Markets? For those who didn't watch the rest of the campaign, you do not have to. Yeah. What is Red Markets? Uh, Red Markets is a tabletop RPG about economic horror. In Red Markets, characters risk their lives trading between massive crimes, containing a zombie outbreak. Oh, all right. Uh, containing a zombie outbreak and the remains of civilization. They are takers, mercenary entrepreneurs unwilling to accept their abandonment. Bound together into competing crews, each seeks to profit from mankind's near extinction before it claims them. I'm now feeling the boogers in my nose. <laughs> Hold on one second. Should I continue? Uh, I got it. Um, bound together into competing crews, each seeks to profit from mankind's near extinction before it claims them. They must hustle, scheme, and scam as hard as they fight. If they hope to survive the competing factions and undead hordes the market throws at them. Takers that are quick, clever, or brutal enough might live to see retirement in a safe zone, but many discover too late that the cycle of poverty proves harder to escape than the hordes of undead. Okay. Yep, that's what it, that's what it, that's says, what it says it is that, about. That's, that's we want to start team. with how our campaign ended. Um... As in, it like, two of us retired. Because, <laughs> yeah, two of you retired, and I didn't want to do any more planning because of throwing my head against the wall. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because yeah. <it's... laughs> yeah. I just meant, like, the thing at the end where it says, like, you might not ever be able to retire is like, but we did in, like, five episodes, five sessions. Yeah, it was way easier than I thought it was to raise that money. I think the so, money, how part much of it was we got some... Very... And we had a few lucky very lucky jobs. It's like definitely it's... very swiggy, but like, it's not like hard impossible. It's just like gambling impossible. It's, it's a just grind. Like, roll well. Yeah, we'll get into it a little bit later. But there's also a bunch of modular rules in this that can very... make it way harder. That's yeah. True. They they That's very affect true. the diffi difficulty. That's true. Truth. So all right. So that is what just to follow our format here. So that is what Red Market says it's about. Is that uh, that opening paragraph? So next is what do we feel it's about? <laughs> I feel like okay. it's about that, but less fluff. It's like, yeah, it it, a, it, everything it says there is present. It's um, just not very. I'm trying to find a better. Everything that says it, it, is present. It does not have reinforced. all of, yeah. It's nothing. Yeah. Nothing is reinforced. This is a, re a reoccurring theme in that nothing really feels strung together. But yes, it does have zombies. It does have Jobs. cycles of poverty that yeah. reinforce like needing to always be on the job. And you technically can retire, but its guidance for retirement includes writing whatever you want. So that means my retirement was ending the world. So. <laughs> By summoning an Eldritch yeah. water demon god. Yeah. I, mean, I wanted to say it's about combat, but when I look at the combat systems, I'm like, no, it's not about combat. completed either. Yeah. It's about no. this negotiation, and that was also in there. It has like, it's not yeah. about yeah. combat. It has combat. It has, yeah. and that's what actually that is in line with what it says it's about. The game doesn't say it's about combat. It says it's they must hustle, scheme, and scam as hard as they fight. Even in how it describes itself, fighting yeah. is a given. And the interesting thing is the stuff around fighting, but fighting is still present. Mm -hmm. I don't... I think that is ha what ended up happening. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing, but in terms mm -hmm. of... Yeah. yeah, fighting in the apocalypse from, was an ass assumption that this game made. From my perspective, it was about resource management. Period. End. Yeah. Like, that's what this game is. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, resource and risk management, I would say. So, yeah, resource one of your resources being safety. Yes. <laughs> um, do you want to fire your gun? Enemy. It does spend some of your bullets. And also, if unless you have a silencer on it or something equivalent, you will attract nearby zombies. So, that is the risk. That is the resource. Is it worth it to what, deal with whatever you're firing your gun at? Um, yeah. Cool. So, uh, character creation. Oh, 
um, yeah, character creation. Um, so your character is made up of three spots, a weak spot, a soft spot, and a hard spot. Um, uh, differentiate, differentiation between weak, so- soft, and hard spots mm-hmm. was super wishy-washy, but spots are basically just like call-outs about your character that can be used for mechanical advantage later, kind of like... Any like sort trait. of game that has traits They're kind of like or anything traits. like that. Yeah. They're the hard spots just are more mechanized, though. But some of them are more mechanized for hard spots. They're more like... A hard yeah. spots affect oh, your starting point... situation. Yeah. My point was more that the terms are sort of wishy-washy yeah, for what I they fall into. The mm-hmm. only reason they're separated, and I don't... This is neither a pro nor a con, is that one of them is more mechanically incentivized than other ones. But that... Combined with the wishy-washy, just kind of feels like why would you differentiate? Could be slightly improved, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you could just simplify it so you have three spots that are like traits or whatever, True. and you just keep the same mechanic, and you don't need to, yeah, worry yeah, you, too much about the terms. But yeah, you could just break it apart, have spots, and then have a background that gives you that mechanical thing. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, the only reason I bring that up is it's part of character creation, and picking that was a weird thing to think about, because it's just phrased. It also would allow someone, uh, so, the tough spot, I think, is the, t- no, hard spot? I think it's tough spot, I might have misspoke. Okay, tough spot, that's the one that you, is effectively your, kind of your background, and that yeah. one, you pick from a list of, like, ten. You don't make it, mm-hmm. make it up by yourself. The others, you can. They're a lot more freeform, and you can make them up by yourself. Um, but... Spot is kind of the closest thing you're getting to a class, so it's yeah. not describing certain yeah. skills or potential. Yeah. Um, archetype. It it's, it's, archetype. Yeah, it is an archetype, yeah. basically. Yeah, it gives you one special power. Mine was Believer, and when... Oh, it's pl- which just gave me like a plus two to all self control checks that conform to my faith, and it forced me to make self control checks when anything challenged my faith. I don't think I pressed you on that though, because everything would technically challenge your faith. Also, uh, you played your character to be exceptionally flexible in your interpretation of your faith. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, just because Dagon is a god that who, the ends justify the means. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like... um, so that is an important aspect. Um, I think, yeah, we didn't hate it. It was good. It was solid. It was a slightly... I guess it didn't completely jive for us, is how I would say. But mm-hmm. we understood it. You made a character pretty easily with, like... Yeah. I, not any more hassle than the most popular RPG in the world, if we want to baseline time time wise. It's less time than that. Very to make so. a character but, in this system. Yeah. But with many many more pitfalls. Like you yeah. can make yeah. a useless character. It can happen. Way easier. Very Way easier to so. make a useless character. This is definitely a game that you wanna sort of have like, okay, I have a face, we have a, a, a like a DPS or a fighter, we have this, we have that. You want to Specialize, which we'll got we'll talk to you about later. But during character creation, that's a thing. They don't tell you that. Account. Well, it, but it is in theme, right? You are a you are an elite group of people that are going out and doing things other people can't. So you yeah. kind of do want that SEAL Team Six kind of specializations between the people. We brought also. Yeah. I had played this game twice before, one shots each. But I also brought that experience and advice from what I learned into it as well. Yeah. Um, so that was a part of it. Uh, you also have skills. A little bit more tricky with character creation was again those potential and skills, mm. with the idea of understanding that potential was kind of the the cap of you can't go above this with your yeah. skills. Potential is basically a stat. Yeah, it's your stats. Your potential but is you like never want to roll it by itself. Um, yeah, you never really could roll it by itself. You could if you don't have the oh, skill. You default. Yeah, yeah. But defaulting is so bad, you never want to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it reverses the dice mechanics. Yes. <laughs> because instead of rolling over, you're rolling under your your potential. Yeah. So if your potential yeah. is at one, yeah, good luck. Because yeah. you're rolling it, a d10. <laughs> it. I think what an easy fix for that would be is just. Uh, we just lost you. Uh, we heard a noise. It's the cat feeder. <laughs> <laughs> um. But basically, just. 
you don't have to roll under your potential. It should just be the base, like you're rolling craps, basically, right? Just roll the two d ten without any Nothing, modifiers. You can't add anything to it at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, I put it. We just uh, we all made pros and cons list because we didn't want to yeah. sit around and. That was one of mine. Was the default felt very punishing? It did. I mm. don't think. I think I ever, I rolled one default roll across the entire campaign. It was literally I would rather not roll than roll default at many yeah. points. Well, that Which, that's also a boom rule is plus one or you can't do that thing. Yeah, mm. that's true. We played with the option or bust rule, rule where me. you can in fact make a roll at all. Otherwise, you can't. Um, which yeah. which for our group. Uh, our play style tends heavily toward the play suboptimally and get some drama out of it. Mm. That it doesn't does. work with this. No. Because yeah. that brings playing up one suboptimally of my... means you're going to fail every time. That brings up yeah. one of my thoughts, um, which isn't actually ne necessarily a negative, but when it, it didn't fit our <laughs> preferences, I think. This game is, uh, if you're familiar with role-playing game stances... Um, and like how someone sort of their relationship with their character, this game encourages extreme pawn stance. Your character is, despite having tough spots and, and like aspects written on your character sheet, no, your character is going to act how you want them to act as a person. Um, the only time they will ever do something suboptimal is when they get a very specific reward for it. Other than that, you are them, um, for the most part. That is, there is a lot of different things that encourages that. Um, across the game, between um, everything being very gamey uh, in terms of how it's presented, but also with a lot of the scenarios that the game presents being very... Um, how do we best exploit this? Environment versus group. Yeah, how do we best exploit this? Um optimization is a big factor and this isn't a game where in character optimization makes a lot of sense off a lot of the time um yeah yeah it's it's actually i think one of the key tenets of the game is risk versus reward yeah and that mindset right. tends to usually do pawn stance this yeah. is a um a game to be overcome, not a game to be experienced. That's intentional mm -hmm. in its part. I think pawn stance is inevitable because of that. So yeah. keep that in mind. What was the next one? I think we already started talking about it, but yeah, dice rolls. The the main I... dice mechanic was rolling yeah. 2d10, and you want one of them that they call the black die to be higher than the red die. Mm-hmm. You can add bonuses to the black die to make it more likely. Yeah. Yep. If you have a skill, it like adds one to one to the die. I thought the way the skill default rolls aside, but I think the way the skills interact with that core dice system is pretty seamless and mm -hmm. like pretty straightforward. I griped a little bit about my only gripe with the skills was on the kind of boxiness of them, how they were very much geared towards the setting. Yeah. And if you wanted to do anything that was slightly out of the setting, it, you didn't have any skills for it. But that is not necessarily a con, because that's something they did on purpose mm -hmm. to reinforce their setting. They really like their setting. Yeah, that's true. Um, the crits were kind of interesting in that instead of, hey, you rolled really high or you rolled really low, it was more a matter of both dice came up with the same number. Is it odd or even? So it wasn't quite intuitive, but it happened around the Right, you would think crits would happen, and that was yeah. kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that made still it a interesting. Five chance, which is which is good. Mm -hmm. Mathematically, it's the same as a d20. Exactly, and that's actually to me that's one of the cons. Uh, preferentially, again, it's not actually a bad thing, but this felt like a slightly better d20 system, um, in that it the dice rolls felt very swingy. Um, mm -hmm. I I disagree with slightly better only because I I look at games in a in a in a very verisimilitude kind of way. Like, you're not going to have the same difficulty unlocking the same door if we'll the definitely target talk number, about that. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it is, a, it is a D20 system where you can't choose your difficulty. Um, I want to ask yeah. Gordon how you felt about that as well, as the person who would normally in most games be setting the difficulty. Yeah. Um, the thing about Red Markets is 
as a GM, I just go, here are the things in front of you. I don't roll anything. I tell you what happens, and you try to avoid it. Which, me personally, I don't like because that makes me feel like the bad guy. Because I think part of this game is you punish your players where you can. But I, as a person, I have anxiety, so I don't want to make you guys mad at me. It's so, also that, there... <laughs> like, to me, that kind of punishing game is not fun for my preferences. And I, I think for a yeah. lot of us, punishing for its own sake. There's yeah, too like... much of a gotcha. There, there's too much of, uh, opportunity for the GM to say, ha, gotcha with that one and screw you over entirely. Yeah, like... um this might be jumping ahead a little bit, but one of the legs, because legs are the things you do to get to your job. They're pseudo-random yeah. encounters, basically. Oh, yeah. I think I think we're done with, with dice rolls, but just to, before we talk about what the legs are, just jobs yeah, yeah. are the main system for what you do in the game. Yeah. You do one a session, and that is very important. You yes. do one job a session. The job starts with a negotiation phase where you talk about the job to figure out like what it is and how much you're getting paid for it. And that phase requires a face character. Yeah. yeah. I want to come requires back to negotiations too. R. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to talk too much about negotiations. Yeah, yeah. And then there is between one and four. I think it's technically one, one and five because it's a D10 yeah. divided by two. There's one in five events. Random encounters. Yeah. Basically one to five random encounters that happen before the job. Yeah. And those are the legs. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Based on how it's supposed to go like how the game presents it it's this is where you make more money than the job that you're taking right um and back to like sort of the the gotcha moments right one of the random legs i believe is in the book on the random table because i've seen it before but i i use the um, there was the carbon monoxide one for example the carbon monoxide one yeah um the one i was thinking of was the bell tower one where you find a body that looks like it's felt from a bell tower and it has a recording and it just says when the takers pick it up here's what the guy says if they're still holding it then they make a self control check because like he you hear him turn into a vector which you guys didn't get to because i had to go like are you still holding it right like mm -hmm. or do you guys pick it up it just it feels like the whole the, um, the gm yeah. tells you what happens to you yeah, felt like yeah, picking a little... it up triggered the the unskippable cutscene, and you have no you have no agency until the description's over. That's yeah, where a lot like... of the legs felt like from when I read them. A lot of the it... legs came off of tables. I didn't realize there was a legs thing on this chart. The legs came off of tables. They're tables. This is a reoccurring theme. Very much love the setting. They are super in depth. They are. Like you were, like that was saying, very much feel like an unskippable cutscene a lot of the time. We tried even the leg nothing part. for the job. They just like we tried here's the, the thing. rule where I think one of the legs was let's sit around and talk at things, and that one was interesting in that we got to talk about what happened and also very prescriptive. We rolled a dice and said your character feels this about that thing. Yeah, yeah that, was, that optional rule options, did not work well. One roll. Yeah, that was an optional rule. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we abandoned but, it right after we tried it. Yeah, um, but that kind of thing also ties into the little vignettes you do for healing, where mm -hmm. they're very prescribed roleplay moments, and I can understand the, the feeling to want to, like, make sure there's roleplaying in the roleplaying game, to make sure that people interact with each other, because I know our group is pretty fine doing it to, like, some extent. We're not, like, professional improv actors or anything. Mm -hmm but where you, we don't just do the exclusively combat to combat to combat play style. Correct. But the prescription felt way more stilted to me than me trying to shove it in a 5th edition game, which is combat to combat to combat. Like, it's easier for me to slide one in when I feel like, oh, that was a good time to talk about it. As opposed, but, like, the prescription left me feeling very stilted every time a vignette or that campfire scene came up. But I yeah, do understand the, the want there, their, yeah, their the, intent. I do respect that they wanted to incentivize role-playing at top degree. And yeah, give it, it a space. Clarify, vignettes basically said, hey, uh, you're going to have a role-playing scene with one other person. You either get to pick which uh, other player is playing the other person in the scene, or you get to pick what the scene is about. Now, go. Yeah. And that was for the restrictions. 
Yeah. Um, I like the sort of, I guess, like the intent behind it, right? I like having sort of your uh, civilian life and your taker life. I like trying to make that distinction, but it was too it separate. Just, it felt yeah, like it's too separate. there wasn't tension between the two. The game never mentions tension between the two, other than you have to bring home money for your the people who are dependent on you. And honestly, it's only like they aren't very dependent on you. They are one money per job. Yeah, your equipment like... is worth several times more than that. Yeah, I had to bring home twelve dollars a job. Two of them. One went to my grandma, and one went to my cultist buddy. The other ten went to, like, my other garbage. So, the jar of leeches, just as important as grandma. Yep. <laughs> Arguably more, to some people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the jar of leeches has a mechanical effect. Grandma yeah. just yeah, grandma sucks money not. away. <laughs> yeah. Grandma makes you feel yeah. better when you come home. Like, that's it. It's true. So, just, just to define, there are two types of damage in this game. There is the mental trauma of living in this world, which is on three different tracks of mental damage. And then there's the physical damage, which is represented by a, a, a big body shape and a bunch of boxes that can be filled with either kill or stun damage. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, combat, during, like in combat, you roll initiative which is very normal. You make attack rolls, you basically get two actions return, a big, big one called it, uh, Tactic, tactic, and one that can be taken uh, either during your turn or any other time during the round. That's your twitch. That can be used to dodge or do other small things. The um, twitch wasn't so much it's... taken. You didn't have control over it. Really. In it narratively, of... yes. Um, yeah, certain certain things allowed you to spend your twitch to like reload a, a very certain weapon. But if you get other shot, times... you I think like your character you will instinctively use, your twitch, use yeah. their twitch. You don't actually get to choose. Yeah. Um, yeah. And other than that, I'd say it's actually fairly simple. Like, it's not... I, I had it's... no issues with the... My biggest gripe about combat was that chart we talked about. The full body chart. Like, yeah. Yes. The chart, one, we briefly talked about this off screen, but like, it's it's a cool concept, but they didn't like flesh it out. Like, you don't lose your arm if your arm box fills mm -hmm. up. Yeah, um, you, might, I think you it... don't know. There's no, there's no rule there. That's yeah, yes. so... <laughs> to to describe this chart, it is a human body, head, legs, uh, head, uh, head, legs, <laughs> arms, torso, head, legs, right here. Um, yeah. And based on what you roll on the dice, it'll tell you if you hit how much damage into what location. Yeah, a la uh, Dwarf Fortress Adventurer mode, you gotta do fist to mouth. <laughs> not that specific but basically oh, it can the be same. though if you call shot it is exactly that <laughs> one of the mechanics we didn't deal with a lot uh because we didn't get hurt was healing and that is actually kind of interesting because the healing of the physical damage was really expensive that might have been uh, part of the intent of where our money drain was supposed to go yeah mm -hmm. yeah but we barely got hurt and yeah, also we had our own I first got, aid kit. We got a med kit and then used all the charges before the end of the mm -hmm. session to yeah. heal ourselves, so we didn't have to. Yeah. And but the mental damage never heals. If you hit a certain it, point. Once you hit a, yeah. yeah. So Realistically, certain... the mental damage never I healed. <laughs> I healed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the with the med kit thing, again, it doesn't say, like, you could only do this X amount of times per job, right? It's just... It makes sense. Why wouldn't you try and patch yourselves up before yeah. you have Charges to pay come somebody back to do it? At the end I'm of every mission. Yeah. yeah. Of course you're going to use your spell slots for healing word before you go to bed. Exactly. That's exactly. How, you, how this works. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so it, it just sort of fits the theme of that uh, there's not... There is a lot of rules and yet not a lot of rules. There are blind spots in the rules. Yeah. Many games have these. But because this game is as punishing as it is, uh, and we encountered a bunch of them, I think they stuck out. They were a lot. They were very glaring to us. Uh, mm -hmm. The problem with the incomplete to... rules was that the the incompleteness was at a point where your character is about to be ruined, and I don't have an answer for how to unruin my character. <laughs> 
Yeah, it encourages it... you to use the rules to find the best way around the thing, but at that very last moment, it doesn't end. tell you how it actually works. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's the the whole the whole like how to fix my ruined character. Then it's on me to go. I can't fix your character, right? It's I think it, it reinforces that sort of. It's not like straight antagonism, but it is like antagonistic in a way. Oh yeah, no. The game master is not playing with the players. The game master is meant to be the other. market, and the market yeah. is explicitly said in the game to meant to be sort of this overbearing antagonistic force. The market is also mm. the market die, the red die that you're rolling against. The GM is represented yeah. as the forces trying to stop you from succeeding. Yeah, and Which... that makes it feel weird in a sense that I never roll anything, but. Although I'm I totally also fine don't, running like... a game where I never roll. Like, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's my preference. If I no, never yeah. have to pick up dice, that is 100% my GMing preference. What, one of the through lines with this game is that it is trying to make a political statement. Like, mm -hmm. bar none, it, it is definitely making a political statement against capitalism. But if you have a group of people that are pro-capitalist, the, the GM is not going to take that position of evil capitalist market forces trying to destroy you. Mm hmm Right, so it, there, there's a lot of perspective, I think, that has to go into running this game correctly. Yeah. yeah. That, um, and then this, this, like, they do make, uh, this is a pro on my list, a vehemently anti-capitalist setup, and like Monopoly, they try to show you that the market forces push you down. The part that is a little bit ironic, the way to win the game is to be super capitalist. Yeah. <laughs> to like it is. make sure you use your resources personally and make sure you use your resources effectively. Make sure you squeeze every last dime out of every situation. Uh, I wish the win condition wasn't a capitalist win condition yeah. to really drive that point home. I get that mm -hmm. it's trying to make a statement about how effectively poverty means everyone has to look out for themselves, but. Yeah. The players you the game. are. When you're playing a game. Yeah, exactly. Win. The players are not the the same as the characters. The characters can be jerks, and they're if you're trying to make a statement, you're trying to make a statement to the players about how the characters are jerks. But it doesn't do that. It just yeah rewards like, I you wish for being you, that. Yeah, I wish you didn't win on personal retirement. Like, I wish it was a group end goal, so it's like, well, even yeah. though the market system is attacking you personally, the only way around it is to work together. And even there within... is the sort of... Oh, Jordan? There is, before you start a game, um, I think I mentioned this, but I don't know if we wanted to do it. You set up, like, after your first job, you go, okay, we all retire at the same time. It doesn't have to be the same retirement. I guess the way you could fix that is, we all have the same goal in mind, so we all do this do one li big last job together, and then we all retire together, right? I feel like that would would drive that point better, but it's also, again, the whole, like, this is, it has anti-capitalist messaging, but then you have to be, like, a ruthless capitalist to win. Yeah, there, there's yeah it's, no trying to, to it's a game that's that. kind of trying to make you feel bad for playing it. Correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... And Which is uh, an, an approach is just not like the one I would have picked for that for that messaging. And it's not in your face enough when you're reading the book, right? If mm -hmm. you want to make that point, just just say it right on the front cover. Just say it. Yeah. Um, um, so zombies. This is also yeah, a game with zombies, even though we barely mentioned, mentioned a zombie them. in the room. <laughs> um, uh, I zombies. I didn't hate the zombies. Yeah, I was about to say, cool. the zombies I, are great when you're not fighting them directly. The normal zombies, yeah, that is. They, they work great as an oppressive force where it's like you always have to be yeah. aware of them. We don't want to fire our gun because zombies will appear. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, and they could appear directly underneath you out of the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, can happen. Yeah, one shamble away, but yes. Yeah, one shamble. <laughs> they, they can um, just, like, trick or treat suddenly, knock, knock, they're here. Yeah. Um, that I, I liked the idea that the game wasn't, even though it was a combat game with zombies, that the goal wasn't a Left 4 Dead-esque plow your way through zombies. You, most of the time you spent avoiding zombies. Because... Yeah. yeah. It's a slog, and I think, like, combat was a slog, but it sometimes felt like it, that wasn't intended for some situations, but other times felt like it was intended. Like, I think combat is supposed to, it is supposed to be unfun to 
left for dead your way through the through yeah. everything. It's supposed to drain um, your resources, which you don't want to drain. Yes, except we get them back at the end of each mission. So yeah, that's a thing we'll talk about. The only thing that I found troubling with combat was that it was humongously time consuming, and because you had you know one job per mission, and that was set in stone. If you got into combat, that meant everything else needed to take like five minutes or less because that combat was going to take a good two hours plus. Yeah, the arbitrary oh. time restriction on one job per session, we ignored in our last two sessions and did one job between the two of them because it doesn't, it, it is arbitrary. I, I do want to put a caveat on that, that we only played five sessions of this with system mastery that would definitely That get would quicker. go down. Mm -hmm. that's and also, true we should have said that earlier we only play five yeah. sessions and i think if you had like because we only play for four hours right if you had a six hour session that wouldn't be a big deal but th that's the other thing the game doesn't say how long a who session is supposed for, to be who plays for six hours i've, I I've I mean, actually found most role-playing game sessions in my own personal experience are averaging shorter over time not longer mm -hmm. yeah like uh honestly it's way easier to get people together for four hours but six hours is your day that's a, a, a yeah it's a whole day like if you're just doing it at night or like after work or something you're not gonna play for six hours yeah yeah you might so get two still, out of it realistically i would still say that the one job per session was a bit of an issue because i remember the one mm -hmm. session where we finished the job because we didn't combat when we were expected to and then we just we, had an we're hour done an hour early I, and the, we're not going to start a new job because yeah the game is very structured and in that way i don't think it needs to be in that part of mm -hmm. it um if there was more support for role playing we could have had stuff there we could have had post session post job vignettes or something like that yeah um yeah um and but this is a play style that's a play style issue really yeah. we're used to playing more let's call them modern role playing games this doesn't feel like an antique role playing game but this feels like a role-playing game whose source material is more like a Fallout-style role-playing game, where it's it's a lot of these mechanics seem to be geared around an automized experience, where it, it, it just runs, and the market's job is to make it run, as opposed to, like, build a whole thing around it. It's, no, we, these are the tasks, we run the tasks. It yeah. seems like the, the basis is more of like a video game role playing. You could definitely feel video game inspiration on Absolutely. some of the mechanics, and not that that's necessarily wrong or bad. It's just that most of the role playing games we play are more of the modern bent where it's about a shared storytelling. Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, that's a good point to make in that this game is very procedural. Yeah, like, you're playing through a story, like yeah. the story yeah. is there in front of you. And and to mash it up against something relatively popular that is also procedural, Blades in the Dark, that is a procedural game as well. You have you have states of play and you roll through them, you know. Yeah. Um, I think this the thing about doesn't... Blades in the Dark, as we experienced, was in a, even its own book, it's like, these are very soft. You can kind of bounce between them if you need to. There's no this, then this, then this, and this. Um, and this game was much more one than two. It's more hard line. line, yeah. Yeah. A lot harder line on the procedures. <laughs> yeah. So we bumped into those uh, mm -hmm. gutter gutters a bit, I yeah, guess. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. So do we want to? Oh, and another thing, we didn't really mess with zombies because they never really got like you guys never took a hit from a zombie was infection. Um, yeah. So zombies are slow most of the time. Yeah. But if they get until close, they get up on you, they are. Yeah. <laughs> if if a zombie gets close to you and starts biting you, you're basically dead like it's yeah if you're not dangerous. dead if you're not actually dead you're basically dead because now you're half zombie and we don't like yeah that you're well, at best a social or pariah you, you know, really lucky immune and suddenly you're worth thousands of dollars in and then everyone wants to kill you and harvest yeah. your body parts so, so you're still a social pariah yeah those are the two <laughs> options for a zombie death was or actually... social outcast <laughs> There was actually the one piece of equipment I never got to use was my chainmail. I bought that specifically because it said if you get bitten, you don't have to test for infection. <laughs> and you just yeah, then you went, I have a sniper rifle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other way I don't have to test for infection is if I'm two miles away. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, but the infection check, I believe it's you roll two D ten, add the players to either strength or resistance. I think it's strength. Or resistance. 
No, because not everyone has resistance. I think it's based on yeah, a potential. It has to be based yeah. on, a, on a potential. So I think it's based off the strength. And then on a success, they aren't infected. Uh, a fail, they are. A critical success is you're immune. And a critical failure is you are naturally latent. And those are people that uh, the virus goes, instead of turning them into a zombie, it goes cold and they are just infection. Right? Like yeah. they still have mental Which... faculties. Feels but like it's weird for a critical failure, given you at least still get to be alive. It's because then, like, you can't touch anyone. No one can heal you without like all of doing a bunch true. of other stuff. It's still it's it, yeah. I I understand why it's a critical failure because it's meant to be rare. Mm -hmm. but... You know, that might have made the game a bit more interesting if we had a latent, because then you would have you would have that narrative thing going on of, oh, I can't be near other people. I can't engage in negotiations. Like, I can't do a bunch of these things that limit you. I think it would... I think what you're saying is it, that would be fun in theory. With how the game actually plays, I suspect it would end up being very boring for that player. For, like, I until, guess... Until you were up against zombies, and then you, you'd you just be the steamroller. Mm -hmm. Which is very true of most character builds basically because you are specifically building towards you want to be the expert in this thing it's most yeah. of the game is boring until you hit that thing that's for you that's true um and uh, i don't love that in general preferentially across any game i haven't loved mm -hmm. um that strong specialization but uh yeah yeah that's almost um, the yeah, gear system gear, is i thought the gear was cool, but also, uh, let me let me put my exact quote. Uh, gear is cool, but not like it's uh, unclear and sometimes not substantial enough. Right? I yeah. love it, the core gear system. Yeah, of... I I agree. Core gear system was was aces. Yeah. So each piece of gear has a limited number of uses that ten. you can spend. It's always up. ten for all of them. Yeah. Um, some gear you only get ten. The other gear refreshes you have the ability to refresh that those charges um i i personally do like that system i think it's it's really good for that whole resource management portion yep we've said this during our campaign but shadow run using this gear system would be great yeah uh the only awesome. downside i have with gears is they're very descriptive until they're not <laughs> yeah. so the, in my opinion, you need to pick a lane. It's either you write out giant rule lists for the gear, or you don't. And you don't sit in the middle. Because when you sit in the middle, it means we're like, well, how does how does that work again? Mm. It's sort of like a tag, but not really. It, it's limited. Uh... Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think the problem, like, the main sort of, like, pillar that we keep running into is this game tries to sit in the middle, and it doesn't do that very well. And I think the game actually says it tries to sit in the middle between like the narrative, because I think this game was made like five years ago at this point. It tries to sit between the narrative games and the more like crunchy games, but it doesn't do either very great. Yeah. 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 When you My, go in two minded, you're going to. Especially with something as punishing, I think going. I'd recommend it go straight towards rule, like more crunchy, honestly. Um, yeah, based on more crunchy would have been else. fine. We have no problem looking yeah. rules up in a book. It like, like more crunchy would have been fine. It feels the reference. best parts of this game feels like it wants to be a board game more than a role playing game. Um, in terms of like resource management specifically, Ooh, and this even would the... be a fun like Gloomhaven s board. Yeah, game it wouldn't. It, it would be a very card. role playing. Yeah focused board game but it would yeah, still yeah. be a board you whip game. out a scenario card and it's like yeah these are the three legs draw for your scenario. vignette card to have a vignette yes. what is that zombie game is it last night on earth is dead, that, is that the one i'm thinking dead of? of winter last night on earth dead of winter but if, uh, if you if you, if you took the, the character sheets from this and put them in last night on earth i think that would work out pretty well mm -hmm. yeah something like that like there's i think the best parts of this game are the crunchy parts yeah one thing that I did kind of like was uh, the adapt adaptation adaptability. adaptability. I think adaptability role of hey, you can put this as a potential, and basically you get to then just refresh your stuff uh, for free as many as you have there. And I kind of built my character around that, knowing getting specifically items where I could do that, and that was that was fun. It was a fun way to feel like I was gaming the system. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I. 
also said I wanted to go back to negotiation and never did. But oh, just to just it's fine. The, I hated just the to touch. Oh, I hated the I, shark so much. I like the idea of the same way I like Blade's flashback, like where you don't have to sit and like plan a thing forever. Mm -hmm. I like the negotiation thing where you don't have to go, okay, what does this guy want? And you like spend an hour RP negotiating with a guy when you can pull out a chart and do this. Like, obviously, I'd want to change it, but I think yeah, it's I'd a good it sort a of nice base pool. thing. Where you do the thing and each side builds up their dice pool at the end, you roll them all. I don't I didn't oh. like the chart. Well, cool. I think that could work. I liked the chart in theory. Um mm -hmm. I think for the negotiation, because of course negotiation is very roleplay focused, I think it was too structured with mm -hmm. it wasn't just like we had one negotiation phase where there is always a secret turn limit. We can't control it for how many rounds of negotiation there are. Why is that the case? It's because the game says so. Even if, in the narrative, neither character necessarily is portrayed to want it. To, like, why would there be a time limit in negotiation in general? It was only secret because we failed. Yeah, Normally, when you guys it, fail, it was only leadership secret. Because, is the the issue secret. isn't it being secret. The issue is that there is an arbitrary num limit. Yeah. Um, that is very variable. Mm -hmm. It's not just always three turns. It's sometimes it's one turn, and you only get one yeah. round of negotiation. I, um, once again, this is a burning will thing, but for what is the Dual argument wits. system? Dual, Dual, Dual wits. wits. Yeah. I wish one of the options to end the negotiation was your turn. You could do things, you could do things until someone folds or calls it. And, like, their turn isn't building their side, it is calling the yeah. negotiation to a close. I think one of the issues is, if there's only one round of negotiation allowed, a random dice roll is effectively determined a maximum limit to how well we can negotiate, no matter what. It's not, yeah. like, it's not we didn't roll well, uh, it's nothing we can do. We're just yeah. done. It, it, I, I know the mechanical intent of that is, in pull in uh character it's you come to an impasse and no one is like budging on their negotiations anymore but it's also it does feel weird it's like it's like the pawn stars thing of like i'll give you 10 uh no i'll give you five can we meet at seven right and then like no one pushes past seven it's it's one of those situations where a little bit more crunch would have been great and you just assign the npc a disposition and from that flows how many rounds and everything else yeah, or even having an option, uh, 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 there's a, a list of prescribed actions that can be done in a negotiation. If one of them was eking out one extra round, that would be great. It might have to be a like reduced effect round of some kind, so it isn't brokenly powerful, but some other way to scramble for hold on kind of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's all I want to say about negotiation, if you all are good. Yeah, I don't have much more to say about it. I didn't like the chart that much, but I do like the concept of like yeah. pre-negotiating the costs of everything. It really fits the theming of the capitalist thing, where it's like, ah, I know you offered this much money, but how about instead? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the system itself would be great with a little bit more refinement in a shadow run negotiating with Mister Johnson kind of yeah setting. Yeah. Although it, in Shadowrun, you don't usually argue with Mr. Johnson. You usually just hand no, it you should, you should totally be able to look at how yeah. that game is supposed no, to I be agree. run. The yeah, reason I agree. That, the reason that no one does it is because there's no system for it. Yeah, and there should be. Yeah, throw this in there and it'll be fine. Oh, God, are we going to have to do the hack-as-you-go Shadowrun game? Yes, is that the yes. Plan? I, we eventually go? we will, and it'll be a sprawling mess of awful. <laughs> I, I think you could very easily hack this into Shadowrun game you we've been talking about the, the entire campaign. yeah i know it's um i think we should do a hack as you go we have so many things lined up i but know i think we should do a hack as you go shadow run game so we come out with like a weird the best shadow run game. a weird we ass, call it like, cyber markets is that what we call it silly yeah we have some weird uh, amalgamation of a game we could attack market of put shadows in a PDF at the end it's just like a hat, like we have like a negotiation system. We like we spend so much time, but we we will figure it out. You, what we do? Capitalism and the money stuff. Like that's one thing I really, really did love about this game was that money was everything. Money was upkeeping gear. Money was upkeeping relationships. Money was stealing. So it but really also did, the money wasn't nickel not, and diming. 
It yes. wasn't like one credit here, one credit here. It was like no one big unit of money. Blades in yeah. this game does the same thing, and I like it where it's there is one money, a dollar is worth something. We're not going to be nickel and diming. Things aren't money seven forty five. Yeah. yeah, you Indiv get twenty copper, five silver, and a gold. Yeah, right? none of that. No, it's, no. here's a chunk chunk of cash or money like valuable. We don't need to worry about this. It yeah. was a high enough number that you still managed it, but a low enough number that it never felt like work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was really, you know, money and health and then whatever stuff you had, but there wasn't... Yeah, we were working in single or double digits. It was never, never got up to triple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think if we're going down the list, um, we kind of, I mean, yeah, references. Um, so those are, if you try to make a role, like, let's say you try to make a research role, if you fail the role, you can say, oh, I know a guy. You tap a reference, it's equal to your charisma. Or no, it's called charm in this game. I always call it yeah. charisma. The CHA um, still, that's why. Yeah. Um, and um, they will tell you, but then you owe them money. And I, I like that. It just adds yeah. to your cost of fees. Like, it was yeah. pretty seamless, pretty painless. And it's an easy way, way to, like, build around. the world. It was a way of getting around, I don't have the skill. Yeah. What can I do? Yeah. Uh, I think we underutilized it a bit. Yeah, probably. But, but yep. that's a system master. I thing, think though. it was. Yeah. I, I do like references. They're yeah. good. Yeah. Call on mechanics are always great. Yep. Um, we mentioned the humanity tracks, right? Do we have anything yep. more to say yeah. about them? No. Nope. I mean, that was basically There's three tracks it. I mean... of stress, basically, from if you're mm -hmm. used to blade stress. Um, it's kind of like three separate tracks of that. One is actually um... stress. Yeah, I kind of wish there was more mechanical effect on the game from them, but other than that, they were fine. Yeah, it's, yeah the only thing is, like, first you crack... They didn't come crack, up ever, but yeah. nothing happens. Yeah, when you crack, you either fight, flight, or freeze. Uh, when you crumble, it's like three other things you pick from, and if you pick fight on your first crack, you can't pick fight on your second crack, right? And then once you max out on one of the tracks, your character be like becomes an NPC, they either die... Or they go out in the wilderness and like say, "Fuck you, humanity! I'm gonna do it myself." Yeah, I I will say it's the one thing on the character sheet that, aside from the spots, it's the one thing that could inform role playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's like a I missed have to opportunity. Fix, again, how we could make it more in line with what we want. I think a single track would work better because it's less spread out. Um, I think it. I'll make it come out more often. Yeah, there is already a way to heal it with vignettes, um, so the numbers can be tweaked either way. Uh, I also like the idea that I just uh, came up with was you can always, instead of it being so much of a penalty to roll um, without, if you don't have a skill, it would just cost like a stress, basically, to roll the skill you don't have, and it's not as easy to fail. It just costs stress or something. Mm -hmm. Could be an example. There's a lot of things that yeah. it could be used for, as we've seen with like Blades in the Dark, obviously, and that's what it, its main thing is, is stress usage um, and mm -hmm. something like that for humanity. It has a lot of potential. Yeah. Um, I think I also, because I just remembered, there are two types of jobs. We didn't mention this, but contracts and then um, I think goods to salvage, I think it's what it's called. So contracts is you do a job for someone else and they tell you how much is paid. Goods to salvage is you go, what can we sell? You go find it and sell it to a wholesaler. And it sort of just changes. Uh, goods to salvage is more, uh, you can manipulate the supply demand of that good and thus change how much you're paid for it. And then contracts are kind of just like the baseline, like I have a quest for you, go do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to say about it. Just to um, jump to something that probably should have mentioned at the beginning there. Uh, one of the things that we started off the game on doing, which you do in almost any game, is that Session Zero, is building the Enclave. And I have to say, I really, really liked that. The world that we put together, uh, creating the NPCs, creating how this Enclave functioned, really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, probably one of my favorite parts of the game as we kept building onto it as we moved on within the game. That was our force sure. of will I'm... that made us build on to it, though. That wasn't yeah, the game. It wasn't we the had the game. opportunity to do that, that exactly. during the uh, vignettes, but yeah. But that is the bit that was hard. My favorite part of the game, actually, the game mostly happened 
when we left the, the game. Yeah. It has you build sense. up your enclave and then doesn't care about your enclave. At least that's what it felt like. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's very much that Red Mar or West Marches kind of thing where the enclave is this safe haven and nothing exciting ever happens there. You have to leave wish, for excitement. I wish uh, on, on the giant list of games we have to play, one of them is called Goblinville. The whole concept of Goblinville is you are goblins and you build a town. And when you go back from adventuring, you add things to your town. So you can do things like build a library. And then all of the goblins of town can read now because there's a library. <laughs> I but love like, that. That's I don't, a great I, idea. Yeah. But if you could do something like that where that would add to this whole thing where we could add things to the enclave like maybe we install a therapist so i could deal with the fact my brain is broken yeah like, but like not like, a default like you have to intentionally build that into your enclave as you play like mm -hmm. some sort of mechanic where you could build onto your enclave would reinforce like the wanting to keep it a safe haven that you built at the beginning and you keep adding to as you go yeah. so that way you don't forget about it yeah i yeah, understand it would, yeah. why it doesn't exist because it reinforce it not existing reinforces the characters acting acting in selfish ways basically but yeah. we had prefer the community aspect and also poverty is in real life not uh at all um accepted from like uh separate from community like yeah it's the community is still very much a, a part of a lot oh, of yeah. cultures that are in although poverty. i do believe that does push their anti-capitalist agenda of separating you from your community is a modern capitalist technique to keep people from moving things up by That's keeping true. you isolated but if we you didn't can't feel rely on your separated community. we feel like our community didn't exist really yeah yeah I, I would have loved for even just our the community members that we built be the ones giving us the job that would have been I, interesting yeah i have to throw that in yeah right? like i'd have to like way. say sheriff yeah. has a job for you right like there's no from a gm perspective you spend a whole session making your enclave, all the intricacies of the enclave, who you're trading with, the history, blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, here are these tables that attach completely to your setting that your enclave isn't a part of at a yeah. base, right? Like, it, yeah. it's such a wasted opportunity. What they, I think, one of the strengths is the setting, but it's too attached to it because it has all of these extra things on top. I think the great way to sort of make it like make building the enclave worth it is you set up here's how the apocalypse happened here's the state of things now don't give me like this enclave's here this enclave's here like in the book like that's part of the novella at the front of this book and don't give me like this taker crew does this here's this taker crew right like let us create that and then, like, it'll they give more had, reasons to... Or they could have had a blank map that you fill in as you go. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. not name them on the map, but... Or also have, like, a blank town list for, like, a law enforcer, a leader, a doctor, yeah. whatever. And you fill in some of those random slots mm -hmm. on a blank town map. So when you roll... the So you, that way you can still have the tables that build into the setting. So when you roll on the table, it says, Your town's doctor has a job for you. And that calls back to the person you put in that slot. Yeah. Something like that is a, is a, would be a great way to do that. But it's it's that whole thing where it doesn't feel super, super cohesive. Yeah. And there's opportunities where they could have blended it more and or not. Yeah. But yeah. The setting itself is very uh is very detailed. Um but it was I I did a long time ago when I I read the entire thing back years ago during before my first session of it. I don't remember most of it now. But it's like a book. It's like Yeah. I can't think of a modern game that has this much many pages in it. There's one older games that totally have more than this many pages in it. It's not exceptional in that regard. You mean Shadowrun. Yes, we're we're once again mean... talking about Shadowrun. <laughs> it, it, yes, it but even more modern problem. versions have, like, intro to... I think the latest version of Shadowrun still had, like, intro to setting, a few pages. Later on, here's the in-depth stuff, instead of just they have, a good oh, third I have book. the 5th edition Shadowrun book, and half that book is a tidy novella where they do, like, short stories about oh, different right, characters. I forgot about those. <laughs> but the, but the, since this is a small press game, right, it's an independent developer, it reads like a game that was based on an IP that everybody should know. And 
your players aren't going to sit there and read 180 pages of backstory before I did they not. get into a game. I, no, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I did not read that whole book. <laughs> I will admit, I I didn't read a lot of the book, but from the snippets that I did read, it was very, very dark. And that was intentional with all mm-hmm. the stuff we were getting, like we're nuking this place. Here's this atrocity that. after this atrocity after this atrocity. Was, but there were so many atrocities that I actually felt the need to, you know, check hey, uh, how dark are we going? Because if we are following the setting, I need to write some lines that I normally wouldn't even touch. Yeah. That wouldn't be needed in most games. No, yeah. I, I Listen, I also have anxiety, but I also have depression, and I'm not going to go there. <laughs> okay? Yeah, it's too, it's too <laughs> yeah. We did not too go much. there. We ignored the setting. Had we gone closer to the setting, there would have been more challenging times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely a Lives of Bales talk is super needed for, yeah. or any sort of safety tool, whatever the thing is that you're using, um, definitely needed for this game. Because if you do play by the book, it does touch on very kind of messed up topics involving the end of the world, and you ought to be on the same page about that, because yeah. it's still yeah. supposed mm-hmm. to be a game, and no one needs yeah. to be taken off guard. <laughs> um... We kind of talked about the reward cycle, right? Money. The, yeah, it's, money it's, is it's the basically so. So the the procedure of the game goes: you open with vignettes to heal from the last sordid affair that you went through. You get a job. You negotiate for it, which hopefully you end up with more money than they're offering. Not always. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go on the legs and hopefully pick up some random crap along the way to to help bolster that amount of bounty you're getting at the end. You do the job, you come back and get paid, and then you take that money and you reinvest it in either your character sheet for uh, equipment and skills or your retirement. Those are basically the only the only things to spend the money on. Yeah, I there's optional like, like small business rules, yeah, but that was like I, actually like tables and like graphs that you have to yeah. do. And I was like, I'm not going to deal with that. I do like the money is XP. It very much fits in line with their whole concept. The way you get a hope of the world in this capitalist hellscape is money. Mm-hmm. Like I do like that. It's a very explicit spend money, get better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I guess um, the theming is all very on point. There are very good, like, like individual systems of this game but they are very separate and like when you dig deeper they're not very clear like they just it needs not only some reconstructive surgery but also like connective surgery yeah but some of the pieces are actually good good. like like, this is an it's very. This is very much a story of roses and thorns, mm-hmm. where there is things that are good and there's things that are bad. There's not that much that's super in the middle. Either it clicks and it works and it fits with the system and it fits as you go. The things that don't really, f- that are kind of in the middle ground there, kind of fall by the wayside. Like the things that are so-so, you don't really touch or interact with. Mm-hmm. It's a game of extremes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. We said what the game says it's about. We read that paragraph. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think those are the same questions again, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they are. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, do, do, do. The play structure made it feel like a video game, which mm-hmm. it seems to be a design intent. So that's not points off. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, honestly, so none of this is point games. off, right? Very like, little of this. It's A lot mm-hmm. of it's preferential. A lot of what we're talking about, we don't like and think is bad, but think it's still intentional. Yeah. Go. Um, what were you gonna say, Marissa? Like a video game. If it was playing like a video game, though, it needs more specification on those items. Yeah, it yep. needs to be more specific in places where it's too loose, and more loose in places where it's too specific. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know one of the questions that we normally ask is like, who would we recommend this game to? And I just think this game would be good for people that like know how to set up lines and veils very well. Mm-hmm. A GM who is more... Oh, super bought into the concept. You have to be super, yeah. rather on board. Very bought in and also like has a GM style that is... I don't want... I mean, I keep thinking antagonistic, but it's not that. It's more like you're Gygaxian. more... Yeah. I guess you, more you Gygaxian. Need, you need a 
GM that's going to ramp up the suspense and the horror aspect. Otherwise, yeah. it's going to fall flat. Yeah, that's and, another problem, and yeah. you need players who will like actually interrupt you in the middle of your monologue and go, I put down the tape recorder. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. You need players it that needs, are on the ball. You need Gygaxian players as well. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Honestly, I think that's what... I, if you're a fan, if you want to play a zombie game, but also kind of play it like AD&D in terms of the mindset uh, and the GM style, even if it's a very different game, that's what this works best with. Yeah, yeah you, need, you need a Call of Cthulhu GM who was also a major in accounting. <laughs> GM does not need to be major. To be fair, I didn't do any yeah, number keeping. We did the math. I, I, I had the Excel off, spreadsheet. Guys. Yeah, I just, I just made numbers go burr. That's all I did. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um. So, does anyone have any pros or cons that were not touched on? Um. I mean, I will say, for for all of my griping about the game, this is the one game where I hmm. played a sniper. They felt like a sniper. They, like, it worked. Yeah. Very few games get sniper correctly, and this one did. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, the ghillie suit said, if they are outside of this range, they cannot see. Let's talk about <laughs> optional rules. That's one thing we have to oh, really yes. up. So, um, in most games, there's like, here are the rules, but also, here are some optional rules you can use to replace parts of these rules or add on to these rules. But the game doesn't do that in this game. In, 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 our, in Red Markets, the game says, okay, here's your path, here's your path. Okay, it's going to split into two different ways. We're not going to tell you which one to take. They're totally different feelings. And back together. Um, and yeah, there's it's... 20 or so of those. There's Pick a lot between of two of them or add something in. And we're not going to give you any suggestions at all or even basic advice. Yeah. And I think there were some actually hidden ones uh, around that, around frenzying and stuff where it wasn't on that list but when you read the sections closely oh, enough it was that was picked. yeah there was a big with the frenzying when within one shamble thing that was i think a big uh it, i like think the that was example a, said one thing and the rule said another yeah, i don't think that was an optional i think that was a flat out like miss oversight oversight there was in my opinion option rule for it though in one of the sections we were reading it was do it this way or this way and oh right just an offhanded comment of um mm -hmm. it takes one or two rolls up to the gm whether or not eh, oh yeah to it get was away like, from a zombie it was either like two a tactic and a twitch or a task up to gm discretion yeah which is like there, i don't think there are That's a lot a of very... things that are up to gm discretion in this game nope. yeah it was not. um yeah but basically the two paths are boom which is your players feel more heroic. Um, and we did that. And That's probably why more like badasses. Yeah. Like, I like doing boom because bust is a lot more like accounting. Bust is you are a normal person trying to make your way and it sucks. Certain bust rules are plus one or it can't be done. So defaulting doesn't happen. Um, high stakes refresh. These are just the either ors, right? Uh, we did all the booms for these, I think. Uh, refresh we equals. ATP and requires a foresight roll to be able to refresh. For the most part, we chose the rules that made it easier for us because, mm -hmm. firstly, the game is very dark and makes it seem how depressing it is. Secondly, the game itself says that even with these rules, it isn't going to be that easy. And it wasn't. Um, we got very lucky in many parts. And I think I think that's it. Um, my impression of the game designer is that the designer prefers the bust rules, but I actually don't know if that's true. That's, um, that seems to be where the majority of the work went in, was the bust mm -hmm. rules, because there's a lot of intricacy in that. I mean, there, there's that one bust rule that you have to budget out your what you're getting from the job before yeah. the job. Yeah, no budget, no <laughs> buy. So it, it effectively adds another phase to each session, because that's going to take a while. It is, you do the vignettes, you do the negotiation, you have no, how much you're going to get paid. All right. You do your now, counting. We do our counting and uh, and basically yeah, budget for everything, and then we go. Yeah, I think from the stuff I've listened to like years ago and a little bit leading up to this with the designer, I do think he is more of a bust kind of guy, where he, he wants, wants it, it to be a slog. He wants it to be a slog. This is brutal capitalism, right? Like things like that. But it's also like. I understand for no budget, no buy, for example. I get the whole 
like you want things to make you feel good. So if you don't budget like having extra money, you're going to go blow that money on things that make you feel good, right? Because you're in a hellscape. I think to a degree, I think so. But based on firstly being on the Enclave and secondly, it once again taking control out of your character without it even being a role. It's not role self-control because there's an entire stat for how that would yeah. be like, how likely are you to blow this money? You have self-control. But the game is just like, not this time you don't. Um, yeah. and, and there's no fallout from that, right? Like if if you took all of that extra money that you didn't budget and you went and blew it all on, you know, you don't whatever, at least whatever heal your humanity. Pleasure. It's not an overindulge right. like from Blades where at least yeah. you healed some stress. No, it's and just it's like you like, waste the money. Yeah, and it's I'm... not like your character isn't available for the next job because they're off in an alcoholic haze somewhere because they had an extra 20 bounty. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no fallout from spending all that extra money it just yeah. disappears yep the idea but that's why we never played with it because we great even at the idea of this we immediately kind of rejected yeah what, what were we saying marissa uh, i was also thinking about budgeting for healing like okay i'm going to do i have to budget six healing every job that's not actually going to heal you or what if you get hurt more or less it that could have been impressively yeah. that's the there. biggest option rule i think in the game was that would have changed the game fundamentally i think for us yeah Yeah, so take all of this with a grain of salt that we played this game on easy mode. Yes. Um, yes. There is a much harder mode that could be much more interesting and, and greater than the sum of its parts, but mm, you have getting to, to that point would have been banging our heads against the wall until they're bloodied, and we would have had to spend real money on real healing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I looking at my list of things uh the only thing i didn't mention was i mean this is another like general unclear rulings but the rope fiasco oh yes there are some yeah, items the... in the if the game does not say if and how you have items that are not specifically listed in the list of items basically rope yeah, being like... the premier example there is yeah, rope it... in a fan uh, it's 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 unofficial, right? It's a totally unofficial. I'm pretty sure book. that one was unofficial. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It. Oh, you mean Veblen goods? That's Veblen, unofficial. Yeah. But in the it's base an game, unofficial equipment list that you can add into the game. Yes. Yeah. That had rope, I think. But it uh, had climbing gear. Climbing gear. Okay. I think so. That's that like still includes not rope. The same to me. But like incidental items, there Art's is a mechanic thing. for it. But the mechanic is listed in a very weird spot. It's listed on a random table on one of the options yeah, for how to use right. your incidental items. Yeah, it's like you scavenge for a rope or spend a refresh to have a rope. And, and that's the only place it's mentioned. Yeah, so that's what we ended up and, using. But it didn't tell us that in the actual rules section. That rule was in a, yeah. in a leg, I believe. Yeah, it and that a is a common occurrence with this book is that rules aren't necessarily what you think they are. The index is not that fast yeah so it's very small um, it's far so... from the worst layout we've seen in, among our many role-playing games but it has its issues numenera yeah. I'd... I'd say numenera was worse in some areas and better in others mm -hmm. yeah. i think the only reason this index is as bad as it is is because not all the rules are in the same place they're very spread out yeah yeah mm -hmm. but um that's all i have to say I yeah. think yeah. real real quick around the horn. One good thing about this game from everybody, because I feel like we've been we've been bagging <laughs> on it a little bit yeah. too much and it doesn't yeah. deserve that much. bagging. Um, no. I like the will skill. Or will you, is had a, good. you had a stat that you could put points into specifically and that stat let you flip the dice. It let you do a bunch like, of stuff. Yeah, like but there was a will stat. There was like. If your stats aren't good, you put more. I put more points in will than anyone else. But it was like anytime I messed up, it was like I I think not. I decided I, not to. Yeah, I am yeah. better than this, and I know it. I can spend <laughs> a will like to buy that. off a crit fail, which makes it just a regular failure, or I can t spend a will on a regular failure to make it a success. Or success, or success to critical to crit. success. Just upgrade your and, dice. But result. that's in my view that saved the game, right? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for that one mechanic, I would have banged out of this game third session and been like, nah, we're done here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I like that you can gain will by playing to your spots. Um, I don't know if that's explicit in the rules, but I love it. It is explicitly in the rules that if someone plays to their spot, it has to be like a negative thing. 
Yeah. Like you can't you can't just go like so, I'm going to go do this thing and get a will, yeah. right? Mo most sessions, I'd say not most, but like more than half of the sessions we played, at least I spent I wasted a turn basically during a combat or something scavenging because mm -hmm. I'm like, "Oh, I I I need that juicy will." Yeah. Yeah. The will worked great. It was a nice like secondary skill mechanic that was no, no, you have points you can spend to to get yourself out of tough spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um so that was really nice. Yeah. I'll I'll say my good thing last cuz I was the GM. Okay. Um I don't have a new good thing, but I do want to re reiterate how much I like the gear system. Uh, my character I think had the most upkeep though it was pretty close. Um and I spent a lot of my money on on upgrades which were so easy to do. It's just you spend one bounty, one money um, on that upgrade. That item has the upgrade. No other paperwork needed. Um, and so I I just kind of really like it. Um, I like having as much it's stuff as I It's just like increasing your I had... skills. You can increase your equipment. It was a nice... Yeah, and that's the way I did. to do that. I spent a bunch of money upgrading my drone from I it can't do anything. Uh, please protect it because it will die if someone tickles it wrong because it that's in the rules if it if it takes kill damage if it gets shot. Um, to it just got hit by a giant zombie moose. Um, almost like hitting against a wall basically, and because it was now armored, it got back up right after. It was a nice way to add levels and depth to the gear that did not include like needing to have a giant gear list like a la yeah Pathfinder you don't need something. five versions of an item you need an, you can do an item it can have five different upgrades and some of them can just say like hey you can't take it with this because some of them do that mm -hmm. um you can't take upgrade a with upgrade b and it's it's no. clean it's to me fun um that idea we had about like building things up that's what it feels like with the gear um to me so that's my big bonus, my big positive. My my positive is actually going to be the character sheets, um, because at no point during play was I like, wait a minute, where do I track that? Like everything we needed was right there. Which for a lot of games like this, with have a, which have a lot of tracking and fiddly nonsense, you don't always necessarily have a space to check off the one use or or whatever else. Yeah, it, yeah. Th and this is really good for being not even half a year old these character sheets yeah because i know i checked like october of last year or like maybe november and they didn't have any character sheets on roll 20 and then when i brought it up again after the first of the year they were there yeah but even so... even the ones that are like included with the book like mm -hmm. aside from you know that that budgeting stuff yeah. with the with the optional rule everything is contained on the character sheets yeah mm -hmm. which a lot of a games nice... that i run across it's not the case they did do a good character sheet it had all the parts yeah Yep. Um, that's the true. resident explosive expert. What did you like about the game? <laughs> uh, again, I'd go back to probably the setting and building the enclave. Really enjoyed that. But resident explosive expert was actually the other thing that I would highlight as this game doing well. I really like area damage, <laughs> and the fact that in this game area damage could be you know, damage a whole bunch of people in a small group, useful for zombies, or damage a whole bunch of parts on one person, uh, made it more versatile and a lot more fun to play. Mm -hmm. yep. I did very much like explosives, and when I, you know, searched through and said, okay, what are all the different options for explosives? There were a lot, which was nice to have some choice and not just be it's this one because that's the only area damage you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will say from a GM perspective, my favorite part I think is the same thing that made me want to play this game is all the theming is there, right? Like whether or not the mechanics are good enough to sort of keep you invested, I think the theming is really, really strong. And also, from a GM perspective, this the there's a web app for this game that is very useful. That has been around, I think, since the game came out. Um, part of that is it adds the the random tables from the book as well as fan made random tables in there, which is nice. Um, it's sometimes it's hard to tell which one's fan tables and which isn't, but um, 
I know it's a web app problem, not a <laughs> yeah, that's a web app because I know one of the random legs that I rolled was um the characters see that the only possible future is and it named like a different RPG that was like I think it might have been like a cyberpunk thing, like cyberpunk third edition or something. Hmm. Um but yeah, like having that app was helpful more helpful than not having the app. I wanted to ask, how was managing NPCs when we were in combat? Presumably, I think that's the only time you really had to. Mm -hmm. um, I It's fairly easy because there's three different types. You didn't run into the third type, but first type is part-time. So they have a maximum health pool of like 10. If they take 10 damage, they die. It doesn't matter if it's kill or stun. Um, Full-time is they have the same hitboxes as you, and kill or stun doesn't matter. Right. And then management is they have exactly your same hitboxes, can take stun and kill. Like it's it's different. And then yeah. can also, depending on if they're like a higher tier, can have will, can be harder to hit where you'd have to have more successes to hit them. Um how does that and, work with how the dice works? Is it just if you only succeed by one, you don't succeed? Yeah. That something like that. Okay. Um That's so and expected. I think the third one is they have like whatever they roll. Well, actually, they wouldn't be rolling. I think it'd be when you try to dodge, it's a minus. Like your roll is minus. So trying to hit them is harder and they hit you harder. So just a, a few buffs and to that, yeah. basically. Um, and I, I think that's also great for as crunchy as this game is on the outset to have the monster management not be that crunchy. Just like there's yeah. a few categories of them and it's just skins on them because that's what matters anyway. Yeah, because in zombies this type of game, too. all of the enemies will be humanoid, at least in shape. You have zombies yeah. and you have people and sometimes one of moose and that's moose. okay. <laughs> yeah, they have four the limbs moose... and they're a mammal. Honestly, moose was the easiest one because I just took, there's a random table encounter that is you find an animal that's from, it could be an elephant, a tiger, a rhino, or I think a fourth one, and I just took the rhino and removed, like, it's bulletproof. <laughs> a rhino's normally bulletproof? No, but that one is, apparently. They have thick skin. In With the shoddy bullets you're gonna get... I was gonna say, that depends... Yes. <laughs> yeah, that depends on how bad our bullets are. Yeah. But is it grenade -proof? It it laser I really doubt it. Anything it's... grenade proof? Really? Yeah, very few things like are that grenade proof. Philosophical question more than. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Yes. Do we want to leave off on a rating out of whatever we make up? Sure. Uh... I got one. The zombies are it. two shambles away. <laughs> <laughs> two out of ten shambles? Nope. Oh. There, it's not They're out of anything. Two shambles. Not away. out of anything. The okay. zombies are two shambles away. <laughs> Meaning still lumbering, not frenzied. <laughs> close enough to be intimidating, not close enough for you to worry about it. Yes. Yeah. I think if I was to rate it in terms of types of drone, I would rate it as... Um, I don't, actually don't remember the name of it. What's the type of like automated vacuum thing you can have in your house. A Roomba? Yeah, I'd call it a Roomba. Where like it'll it gets the job done, but it'll sometimes bump against stuff it shouldn't. <laughs> such a, so accurate. And it scares the hell out of the cat. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh for for me I, I guess it it falls squarely in the brains are all right food. They're not good mm -hmm. food, but they're all right food. Yeah. <laughs> Never been great at these scale things. You can be our only person and who actually gives it a number. Talking, yeah, yeah, you can just I, do a normal number. As we've been talking, it's actually the number's been going up. Uh, mm. And I'm I'm putting it dead center, 5 of 10. Mm. All Conformist. Right. Your um, 10 scales. I, <laughs> I will give it... It's a D10. Uh, 5 on a, on a D10. <laughs> I'm going to give it 4 out... No. Three out of five villain NPCs I didn't get to introduce. <laughs> that is the only way a GM can rate a game. Yeah. <laughs> how much crap didn't I get to use? Yeah, that's mm. how that's how I rate See, this game. The funny part is I had 
not only the moose, but I had a, I called it a Wendigo ab aberrant. So there were two horned creatures <laughs> that were around, which, which well, is the ritual you well, we went into. You should have told us. We would have gotten them to fight each other somehow. I don't think they, uh, zombies don't have zombie each other. kaiju fight. Let's let's go. I would have been there. Yeah. The thing is, I didn't know what Forget the Wendigo football. could do, so I had to try and wing it. If you ever ran into it, <laughs> but you planned the legs in advance. Were we ever going to run into it? Do you think, or was it one of the quests that we didn't take? Um, I think it was. I think it's what if I was going to introduce it, I would have figured out what to do, like I did with the moose. Okay. So I like teased it when you went to the. Uh, missile silo, and then you all went. It's the moose, <laughs> and the shield everywhere. Well, you, we teased the we te you teased us yeah. the Wendigo, and we just decided it was the moose. You decided it was the moose, and failed every roll to see it like staring at you from the woods and then leaving. Perfect. It was obviously the moose. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course, it's the only logical answer. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um. Then I think so. we're good. That is our yeah, review that... of Red Markets. Uh, yeah. Are we all available next week? Before we yeah. say what we'll Indeed. be doing next yeah. week, even though I think we might have already. Okay, we will be back next week with our session zero of Chasing Adventure. Yeah. We're getting started with that. Who oh, designed that game? Primer. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I did. Uh, I don't think we want to do a review at the end of that. We're just doing like a, a play I'd test. say it'd be more of a feedback like thing we can yeah. yeah yeah feedback but we don't need to do a whole review because that would be uh uh biased what, what on, was on the ethical. designer's intent <laughs> <laughs> let me go message them and ask find their social media profile but 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 also like as we play the game you can clarify an intent yeah. in a way yeah that it's not a blind us reaching from a book we couldn't yeah, do that's fair. yeah and if something comes up that's like a big problem i can tweak it then and there or at least by before the next session yeah, yeah, like looking over the game again, because I think I've play tested it a lot. Uh, I noticed that one of the things you can do is you can change playbooks. Yep. And nowhere in there does it say what happens when you do. It just says yep. you can do it. So there's going to be a whole, like, I already have that included in the next version um, mm -hmm. on my notes to write that up. I already know in my head what it would be. Um, so that's a thing. But that is a different game, which is not Red Markets, which this was a review. Yes. True. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So next, so next week we set about breaking Spencer's dreams. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we all, have we all dreams. summoned. It's a, okay. Take on. <laughs> okay. We will be back then. Thank you, everyone, for watching.